It's the professional Master Chef quarter final. These six talented chefs stood out in their heats. Now they will face two more challenges to test them even further. Going into the next round, yeah, pretty nervous. Um, it's the not knowing again. Getting into the quarterfinals was always a great start, and this is just the start of me. Yeah, I just want to get in and do it. I want to get in and cook. First, they will have to face an invention test. That could sit in any three-star Michelin restaurant. Those that get through will then cook for the country's most discerning food critics. And it's just perfect. Only the best will earn a place in knockout week. Our chefs have really got to show us what they're made of, and it's going to start here today. This is the part of the competition where we need to see our chefs shine. Chefs, welcome to your quarterfinal. Please uncover your ingredients. Marcus and I have not seen one of you make a dessert. You have white chocolate, rum, some ginger and syrup, a whole fresh coconut, hazelnuts, two passion fruits, a banana, pineapple, nutmeg, and mint. This, guys, is for a place in the next round. Four of you are going through, and two of you are going to be going home. Ten minutes to plan your dish, and 90 minutes to cook and serve. Off you go. You and I need to know who can cook pastry, who can create pastry, who can think on their feet. Pastry, you can't just wing it. You have to think about it, you've got to be precise and be spot on because there's nowhere to hide. I've done about two days on pastry in the last four years. I know what I want to do, it's just I, I'm going to struggle with the recipes, I need to dig deep and try and remember. <laughs> it could have been a lot worse, yeah, <laughs> so it's, 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 I'm okay. Just. I've uh, got a plan. Hopefully, it's, when, it, when it's plated, it's uh, as good as it sounds in my head. But... Chefs, your 10 minutes are up. Your time starts now. Joe is our 22 year old private chef in Edinburgh. Joe had some issues with the skills test, but boy, did he come back fighting on the signature round. I thought, this chef has got something in him. Uh, obviously, there's pressure every time you go into the kitchen and cook. You know, you always want to put up the best dish, and that's exactly what I'm going to be trying to do. Let's go for it. Joe, happy to be in the quarterfinal? Certainly am, yeah. Pastry is your strength. I'm not trained in it, but uh, I've been sort of working in private kitchens. I have to do everything. So you're a self-taught pastry chef? <sighs> yeah. Yeah, I guess that's it. OK, tell us what you're cooking. A white chocolate sponge with caramelised pineapple, uh, toasted hazelnuts, um, a passion fruit cream, mint creme anglaise, and a pineapple jelly. Ignore her face. <laughs> I'm sick. Well, you just said you've not done much pastry before, and then you just ramble off a whole lot He's of... He's underplaying the... it. Yeah. He's keeping it low-key. Joe's making us a caramelised pineapple with white chocolate sponge. The rest is pretty straightforward. It's a cream, it's an anglaise, and it's a roasting of pineapple with some hazelnut. White chocolate sponge should be light and airy. He has to be careful with the addition of white chocolate. This will make that a bit more dense. Joey, our 27-year-old chef here in London. Wow, her skills test for me was probably one of the best we've seen so far. And I think this chef has got something about her and that's why she's here. I'm a planner by nature, so I do really like, I don't like the unknown and I don't like surprises. 
all I'm going to do is try to keep calm as best I can and um, try and forget about the reality that someone is leaving at the end of the day. Hi, Joey. Hi. So pastry is, is within your comfort zone, you say? It is, yeah. The first restaurant I worked in, I was put into pastry, okay. in a French one star. So I have a bit of experience, but it's been a long time since I kind of dusted off those recipes and uh, those skills. And I assume you're drawing that down right now. What are you making for us? A passion fruit curd tart and sweet short crust um, with white chocolate ice cream and pineapple and mint salsa. I like the sound of this. <laughs> I love passion fruit tart. I suppose the skill here is getting the tart case beautifully lined and cooked perfectly well, and of course, the setting of the passion fruit. In great hands, if it's done as simply as it sounds, it could be stunning as it is, but I want to see something amazing from Joey here today. Chefs, you've had 30 minutes. Gavin, our 38-year-old head chef in Hampshire, he's got the right approach, he's got the maturity that you're looking for from a head chef. The signature dish, there was so much potential and great techniques at hand. You can see the chef in Gavin. I've got many years of experience. To a degree, it could give me the edge over so many younger guys, but it's on the day, isn't it? Anything can go wrong. Gavin, quarterfinals. Relieved or surprised? A uh, bit of both, really. What are you making for us? So I'm going to go with a, a light ginger panna cotta, nice passion fruit curd. I've roasted off some hazelnuts with a little bit of sugar. Um, and now I'm going to finish it with some pineapple. I'm going to slowly roast it with a little bit of rum. Definitely. Does this phase you at all, the test? A um, little bit. You know how this works in, in here yeah. in the Master Chef kitchen. You know that yeah, you're going to get hit with some pastry somewhere down the yeah. line. Have you prepared for that? Not at all. I have to cover pastry in my job at work. Um, I do have a pastry chef that I work with, so... But she tends to take the brunt of it. Yeah. So she's right. a little bit more organised than I am. <laughs> Gavin is making us ginger panna cotta, which he's serving with a passion fruit curd. He's roasting some pineapples and he has some candied hazelnuts to go with it. Everything about this dish sounds right, apart from the panna cotta, on the basis of that he's not 100% sure, the setting agent, the balance of the mix. Panna cotta is all about the wobble. The other flavour that concerns me a little bit is the ginger. Ginger, when it's not used correctly, it's hot, it's quite heated. There's going to have to be the right balance with this flavour. Dean, our 25-year-old junior sous chef from Wiltshire kept himself very calm, together, very focused, I think. When it came to the signature dish, good chef, great dish, good job. I've got a bit of an Achilles on pastry, but hopefully I know enough just to get me through and by. There's so much I can do, and I just want to show people what I'm made of. All right, how are you? You look a bit scared there. Um, just pastry isn't my strongest point, so I'm just trying to make sure I deliver a nice, simple dish. OK, what are you doing for us? I'm just going to do a really light set custard, a bit of uh, charcoal pineapple, pineapple and passion fruit uh, salsa and just some, like, a hazelnut crumb. OK. Hopefully. Sure, Dean, you look a little bit unsure. I'm... Um, there's a bit of advice both Monica and I can give you. Put some confidence into it. Yes. Because if you don't have confidence, then the dish doesn't have confidence. Yeah. Give the dish some energy. I will do. Yeah? No, I want to keep going. I've got a lot more to bring and I've got a lot more to give and I'm going to give it to you guys. Absolutely. Good, that's more like it. That's what we want to see. Dean is making us a set custard, serving it with a char-grilled pineapple and a hazelnut crumb. That's pretty much it. <laughs> this has got to be outstanding and fault-free. There is nowhere to hide on this dessert. Chef, you've got 35 minutes left. 35. Alex, our 28-year-old senior chef de party, is a bag of nerves. Uh, it's costing him here. In the signature round, his timing was a big issue. But overall, what he put on the plate was really good and very well executed. Don't worry about me. You keep your head down. I've just got to relax for the next round. Um, concentrate and just chill out, I think. <laughs> Not too much, but... <laughs> Alex, you look almost... Complete and finished. Yeah, no, I'm. Um, I finished it, but I might, I might go back and kind of improve it a little bit. Well, I'd hope so, because you still got half an hour. Yeah, at I, might least go, I might go left. back and try and salvage it a little bit. W what is the dessert? Uh, I'm kind of doing like a sort of a trifle, I guess. Really, I'm doing a passion fruit jelly in the bottom, a white chocolate creme pat, made a ginger sponge, and I'm going to do like a pineapple salsa with it and some caramelised banana. And my knowledge of pastry is like really limited, so I'm, you know, 
Okay. Well, making it up as I go along a little bit. <laughs> We'd like to see some fight from you. Yeah. So let me try and out. let watch me try and out. fix it. Come yeah. on, come on. Let's go, Alex. Alex has got a passion fruit jelly in the bottom, a crimp pack to go in between the layers, and then oddly he set that lovely sponge that he's made, the ginger sponge, on top. Oh dear. I think this chef just needs to seriously step back from the bench just for a minute. Alex has got time on his hands. He could still save this. Josh is a 23-year-old chef de party in Cheshire. He has started to really carve his way out in this competition. And wow, what a wonderful lamb dish that was. This is the one chef that I think will have touched some pastry somewhere down the line. <laughs> I'm nervous, I'm definitely nervous. I just don't want to mess up. But as soon as I'm in there, you just head down, crack on, and it should be okay. Josh. Hi. So, are you quite comfortable in pastry? Yeah, I like to think so. I'm on pastry at work. I do pastry and starters. I've only been there a year and a half. So, you've spent a year and a half on pastry? Yeah. That's what you've been doing? Yeah, and, and starters, doing both. You but... just don't know how high you've set the bar. <laughs> oh. I said I wasn't going to mention it, but... No, I just... no, 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 it's a good thing he's come out, because it's always good to know. So, yes. what are you cooking for us? Uh, I'm basically doing bananas and custard. Um, okay. with, so, it's poached banana uh, with creme pat, uh, a crumble, banana biscuit, and baked white chocolate. But what, why the water bath? It just... Is that it... to tenderise the banana? Yes, yeah, yeah, tender, tenderise yeah, the banana. Tenderise it, so it's not mush. You look very calm, Josh. Yes. I look T calm. Tell me you're really nervous inside, and you're dancing around in there, <laughs> and just active... My and heart's it... beating really fast. <laughs> I've been in this country 15 years. My child loves custard and bananas. And to my horror, I've had to learn how to make it. But I want more from Josh. He's tenderizing the banana by putting it into the sous vide bag. He's going to elevate it to a, to a bigger flavor, which is a nice thing. I hope he can deliver this dish today. Chefs, you have only 10 minutes left. Yes, you've got 60 seconds left. 60 seconds. That's it. Time's up. Step back. That looks nice, I got it out. It was literally like a pancake that just <laughs> got air under it. Also. How'd you get on, Joey? Sorry, I changed my tart at the last second. <laughs> it looks so naked. How did you guys get on? Disaster. Did really? all good. Yeah. From the ten ingredients they were given, head chef Gavin has made a ginger panna cotta with passion fruit curd, crushed candied hazelnuts, and slow roasted pineapple with a caramelized white chocolate and rum sauce. You can see the wobble on the on the panna cotta. But the proof scooter was going to be in the eating there. Yeah. There's some really great flavour combinations going on here. I like everything on this plate, except the panna cotta. It's like you just sort of couldn't afford the cream. <laughs> I tried lightening it a little bit too. You've much. lightened it but you've lost that wow. Gavin, it was never going to be easy when you're guessing uh, the measurements of the panna cotta, but you're lucky, though, it's got a wobble. Because if it didn't wobble, he'd be wobbling. <laughs> <laughs> just that little bit more, and I think it could have taken it to a whole new level, but just a touch under, really. Joey's dessert is a passion fruit curd and sweet short crust pastry tart with white chocolate ice cream and a pineapple and mint salsa. Wow. Oh, that is good. Uh. Mm. That's my half. 
Joey, that is absolutely delicious. Fantastic. How you did that with no recipe, I've no idea. <laughs> Thank you. Joey, you know, when... That when pastry just oh, melts in the mouth. So flaky. Wow. <laughs> I'm just really happy. I'm a silly, happy chef at the moment, and that's because of you. Mm. This is so simple. It takes such skill to make it this amazing, you know, that tart on its own with the ice cream. Mm. That's sold. Thank you. That could sit in any three-star Michelin restaurant. No. Yes. <laughs> wow. Wow. Whew. Nailed it. Yeah, well done. Nailed it. Well done. Jesus. Oh, dear, it tastes amazing. Thank you. So good. I've got to go next. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, I feel a bit in shock. It, it's... Wow, it's amazing. I mean... Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I don't think it's sunk in. I don't think it ever will. It just seems too unreal, in a way. 22-year-old <laughs> private chef Joe has made a white chocolate and ginger sponge with caramelised pineapple, pineapple jelly and passion fruit cream, dressed with toasted hazelnuts and a mint and lime creme anglaise. Your eye for presentation has, has always been spot on and, and that doesn't let us down again here. Thank you. They are flavours that do go together. The cake does have some white chocolate coming through it. I just find that it's, it's gone a bit dense for, for my liking. I think this dish had potential. What I think has gone wrong here is the execution. If you'd have tasted that cake blindfolded, you would think you'd just got something dry in your mouth with not a lot of flavour. In fact, for me, almost no flavour at all. The reason why I'm saying this is because I think you are capable of taking this dish mm. elsewhere. Up, up, up. I sort of want to sort of shake you right now. No hindsight, it's brilliant, but, um... Yeah, there's probably a lot of things I would have done differently. However, that's what I did, that's what I put up, and... 23-year-old Josh's dish is his interpretation of bananas and custard with sous vide poached banana and crumbled banana biscuit, served with baked white chocolate, creme patissiere and banana twill. Josh, why is there burnt twill on this dessert? It's just a bit dark around the edges. The main event of your dish is a peeled banana. Nothing's gelling together in my palate, nothing. There's no marriage going on at all. It's just sort of individual little bitty things that aren't quite done very well, unfortunately. OK. okay. We, we, we've been in this for a while, and a burnt twill is a burnt twill. Okay. All right, chef? Yeah. There, there's just no getting around it. And if you know it's burnt, leave it off. The bananas, I love the fact that you had the rum and the syrup, but it was so clear when that banana came out to the water bath, it hadn't really cooked through, OK? Yeah, I'm not feeling too great. Uh, I think I've let myself down a little bit. Because um, I really liked that dessert and it just didn't play out as well as I hoped. <sighs> Senior chef de partie, Alex, has made a tropical trifle with layers of passion fruit jelly, creme patissiere, and a ginger sponge, topped with pineapple and mint salsa and caramelized banana. It's really the only way to look at trifle, isn't it? Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, it looks much better than the first one you, you attempted, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a lot better than I thought it was going to be. Hmm. We can certainly taste the passion fruit. I can taste the sponge and the bananas on top. I feel like I just want to wash my mouth out right now because I just, I'm just tingling with sugar. I think there's some great elements that you've made here. For a tropical trifle, it's nice, but it shouldn't feel as heavy. 
And I'm not a pastry chef, but so I sort of, I was really was winging it the whole way through, you know, sort of not measuring anything out, just chucking it together and hoping it would work. And it, it did sort of work, but just didn't have the wow factor. Finally, it's 25-year-old junior sous chef, Dean. He's made a light set custard with caramel jelly, char-grilled pineapple, pineapple, passion fruit and mint salsa, garnished with shortbread biscuit and a hazelnut crumb. That set custard, it's rich, it's smooth, it's oozing, it's got custard written all over it. I like it a lot. And it's really good. I think the pineapple adds the freshness to it, it's not too sweet. And the little shortbread adds a nice little texture to, to the plate. Yeah, I like it. Thank you. I think you need a big dose of confidence in the pastry section there, Dean, because in eating this plate, there's some great skills at hand. Thank you, Sean. If this is you without confidence, I can't wait for you to get your confidence back. It wasn't a complete disaster, but hopefully it's enough. I just don't want to go. I've got so much more to give. <laughs> invention tests are tough, but put into a pastry invention test and we almost push our chefs to the breaking point. There is one chef that has just blown the competition apart. The dessert by Joey, it was just exquisite. It was amazing. Joey goes through for me. Absolutely. Dean lacks confidence, but I don't think his dessert lacked confidence at all. Josh, for me, has had some issues and has thrown up red flags with his cooking. Josh is not going to make it through to the critics. He's not got enough experience. He's got a great career ahead of him, but I think he's run his race for us. That leaves us Joe, Alex and Gavin. I think Joe is a very talented chef and he has a great eye for detail on presenting his food. Today, I just didn't think he quite got some of the elements right on his cooking. I know I can do better than that and it just didn't really go that well for me on the day. He... What can you do? Gavin is the one that puts pressure on himself because he's a head chef. He can just relax, forget that he's a head chef, and just come and enjoy the competition. I think we'll get the best out of him. I think I may edge it. I, I don't know. Alex had issues with his first trifle, but he went back fighting and started again. He put up a really nice looking trifle and it's very hard with the trifle because at the end of the day it's a trifle. It goes in a glass, that is it. <laughs> I don't know, I just, I, I really don't know what made me think of trifle. I should probably learn some more dessert recipes. <laughs> I think deep down, you know who you'd like to go through and I know who mm. I'd like to go through. It has to be the best of the three. Chefs, welcome back. Pastry can and it always will be the Achilles heel of a lot of chefs. And we need to find out which chefs stumble because we cannot take a chef through who doesn't understand some part of pastry. The first chef that is going to leave us is... Josh. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, Josh. The second chef that's going to leave us is... Alex. Sorry, Alex. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. I don't know why I made a trifle. Uh, it just came to me. I just I thought it'd be a good idea. I thought the trifle would be a good idea. Yeah, it's horrible to leave at this stage, but it's not going to stop me. It's, uh, it's just going to push me, push me further. Oh, 
Hadi anne. Hadi anne. Hadi Today, you four get to cook for our critics and us. Do not let this opportunity slip by. There's only three places in knockout week and one of you is going home at the end of today. You have one hour and 15 minutes. Off you go. Here it is, four chefs coming in today to cook for our critics. What an amazing opportunity for them. But in saying that, we've seen many chefs crumble at this stage. This is where this competition gets very, very hot. Yeah, I know one or two of the critics have been in restaurants I've cooked in. I know how they can be. Hard, select committee, tough, tough call, really. How are you, Gavin? Very nervous today. Nervous? <laughs> yeah, a lot of pressure today. What are you cooking for us, uh, Gavin? Some John Dory, oysters cooked in lovely beer batter, some white beans cooked in a little bit of chicken stock, do some pearls made out of a Chardonnay vinegar. Dessert, I'm going to do a caramelised white chocolate mousse, um, but I'm going to set it in a white chocolate dome. I'm going to set it with some braised apricots cooked in some vanilla. I think I may have done a little bit too much today, but, you know, it's a competition, we've got to give it our all. Do you see yourself going further in the competition with <sighs> these dishes? I'd love to say yes, but there's some good competition out there. I'd maybe have a, a bit more experience, maybe, I, I don't know, but everyone's on an even kill. It's going to be tough. There's quite a lot of things that can go wrong with this main course. But you don't want the kohlrabi crunchy, you don't want the beans overcooked, and you certainly don't want that fish overcooked, because when it is, the critics are going to hate it. Beans are bland. They need something to really elevate them, and I hope Gavin is going to do that. Gavin's dessert today You've got to get the white chocolate beautifully caramelised. This is all about the control and the cooking of the white chocolate. Done well, the caramelised white chocolate is sensational. No, no, don't want to go home today. I want to get in there, cook uh, the food that I know I can do and cook it well. For the main course, I'm doing duck breast, cauliflower puree, mascarpone and goat's cheese pearl barley and salsify with a blackberry sauce. And for dessert, I'm doing salted chocolate ganache with uh, ginger nut biscuit base, fresh mango, orange reduction. Should be quite fruity and flavorful. This is all off the top of my head. I love putting dishes together. Off the top of your head, but have you practiced these I've dishes? I've practiced it. I've spent a long time putting them together, thought about all the elements, how they work together, and I'm confident that they work. And under the time restriction? It's going to be a push, but, you know, if you're not sort of pushing yourself against the time, then you're not working hard enough. You're 22, the youngest in, in, in our kitchen today. That doesn't worry you, does it? Age is but a number. <laughs> That's what we say. Yeah, <laughs> Joe's serving the duck breast with a blackberry sauce. It's all about a balance here. We don't want too much of that sweetness through this dish. Joe's dessert, chocolate ganache, gingerbread and cardamom. Wow, this dish sounds delicious. Joe is really pushing himself against the clock. 30 minutes. The dessert caught me out a little. Obviously, my kid is here, and I've got to show that I'm confident in my food and that I can deliver. I will prove to Monica and Marcus, and I know what I'm doing, and I want to achieve it. Dean, how are you feeling today? Yeah, better. More confident today. I hope so. It's all your menu. The test, the timings, you know what you've got to do. Should be plain sailing. Yeah. Hopefully, as Good. long as I, I get it all done, I've got quite a bit to do. Lamb, mince and peas. I'm going to do like a little fricassee with a Israeli couscous peas and pancetta and then finish it with like a little bit of morale mushrooms and a mint jelly. For dessert, I've got like a white chocolate cheesecake, a burnt butter crumble, uh, macerated strawberries and yuzu. All right, so what's the ambition? To go all the way. I'm, I'm not here to mess around. This means everything to me and I, I don't want to go home knowing that I haven't done my best. Have you cooked for these critics before? I have no idea. Have you cooked for any critics before? <laughs> I've cooked for critics, but it's never ever been my own food, so right. to me it means a lot, because obviously I'm cooking my food and there's nothing to fall back on, it's me on a plate. Well, now stop talking and get on with the job. Thanks, Chef. Lamb, mint, peas. What could go wrong here? 
He's got a twist adding a mint jelly to it. The mint is crucial in this recipe and that's what brings the freshness of, of, of summer spring to this plate. I love cheesecake with the addition of white chocolate. Mm. He's using yuzu, very, very powerful. He's going to have to make sure he judges the balance to the white chocolate. Chefs, you've got 15 minutes left. Joey today is cooking us a crab salad. Inside the crab, she's going to have some apple and some chilli and a little bit of shallot. She's serving it in crab and potato cake. The cake has got the brown meat for it, so I love that Joey's using this one in her dish. On the side, she's going to be serving it with a pear mint soup, chilled. What's intriguing about this dish is it's a salad, which is quite a brave thing to come to the table with at this stage of the competition. Joey's dessert today is a yoghurt and coconut panna cotta with cherries that have been soaked in white rum, a sable biscuit and a lime granite. Beautiful sounding dessert, fresh, light. What I do love about Joey's food is that her simplicity has a lot of skill behind it and I want to see this. Right. Joey, you look happy to be here. I'm really happy, it's really fun. It's mad and stressful, but good. <laughs> this type of food seems incredibly summery. Uh, it sounds like food that's always got a smile to it. And you've always got a smile on your face, which is a no. nice thing. <laughs> Nervous smile. Um, yeah, I, exactly. I mean, I, I love to cook really kind of clean flavours, refreshing flavours. Um, Do you think you'd ever get this far? No, no. <laughs> so anything from this point on is yeah, bonus? Yeah, it's all a bonus, absolutely. Do you think you can win it? I don't know. I'm just trying to... Freeze the granita. That's all I can think about. Do you want to win it? I do. I really. The more each round, you want it more. Like initially, I thought it was ridiculous that I was even here, and I'm like, oh, okay, I can keep up, and I want to stay. That's the spirit. Chefs, you have only ten minutes left. The pressure's on today. To get through these judging sessions, I always miss breakfast, which means at the point I sit down, I'm really, really hungry. So what I'm hoping is I'm going to meet a bunch of chefs who really know what they're doing and want to make my hunger worthwhile. We are looking for people who can combine originality with a bit of flair, with good technique. Eating here is very different from reviewing a restaurant. We can't give extra points for great service. We can't give extra points for a lovely atmosphere. It's all about the food. They cannot mess up. The food has to be great. Gavin, you've got five minutes for a plate to do. How are we looking? Uh, a little bit behind. A little bit behind? Yeah, not where I want it to be. The thing that strikes me looking at Gavin's menu across both courses is he's given himself a huge amount of work to do. Fillet of John Dory, white bean emulsion, oyster, chardonnay pearls, oyster velouté and kohlrabi. I would feel more encouraged if there were fewer things. Gavin, you've got three minutes left. Oh, wait. Don't lose it. Keep it together. How behind are we? Um, a couple of minutes, really. Okay. Gentle, easy, Tiger. Thanks. Gavin, your time's up now, okay? So, ideally, we'd like to start plating up. What else have we got left to go, Gavin? A little bit of the kohlrabi. Um, oyster beignet, and then just jug the sauce up, and I'm done. I don't really need to do that. Yeah. Yeah, done. Okay, so we've got fillets with John Dory, white beans cooked in a chicken emulsion, oysters cooked in lager batter, kohlrabi, and some white wine vinegar pearls. And the sauce? The sauce, sorry, is a light oyster velouté. Okay, thank you. Thank you. 
this is quite pretty, but I am concerned about these verified white wine vinegar pearls on the top. It's obvious, isn't it? They look like frog spawn. Very small frog. This is an almost but not quite. Um, the fish is just slightly overcooked. The beans are just slightly undercooked. And there are outbursts of acidity, like people shouting at a church service when you're least expecting it. You can kind of see where he's going. There's two brilliant things about this, I think. I love that oyster beignet. It's like a sort of dreamy fish and chips. But the really amazing thing is this oyster velouté. It's just perfect. Mm. I love the sauce. Nice piece of fish. Job done. Um, the sauce is really good. The fish is cooked well. I just think, given another 10 minutes, this dish could have been at another level. It is a couple of minutes away from perfection. How was that, then? Yeah, very nervous. When you take a breath, you have now 15 minutes for your dessert. Gavin's dessert, caramelised white chocolate dome, and apricots cooked with vanilla, apricot puree and roasted oats. That white chocolate dome slightly concerns me. How has he made the dome? What happens to the dome? Does he have enough time? Is he blowing up balloons back there? I am full of questions. <laughs> you're, you're a bit more calm, not less rushed. I spent too much time on my dessert when I should have been doing my main course. I made a bit of a mess up. You look like a chef at the moment that's in service rather than a competition. Uh, it feels like service. It looks like it. Are you done? Um, I think I'm going to try blow torch in one of them. Not too much. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Excuse me. Thank you. So we've got a uh, caramelised white chocolate truffle, braised apricot, roasted oats, and then small syrup just from the uh, cooking liquor. Maybe a little bit too adventurous, but fingers crossed. Thank you. <laughs> that was bizarre. It was so tough. In service, you've got a group of guys stood behind you, assisting you. It's a team effort out here. It's solo. You're one-on-one, -on -one, so... And it's hard, really hard. It's a lovely-looking thing, isn't it? Take the taste of salted caramel and turn it up to 11. It's absolutely full-on, isn't it? And I can't quite decide whether it's too full-on. No. It's delicious. The saltiness of the caramelised insides, just delicious. Sharp apricot on the outside, that's pretty delicious too. Um, it's a very good pudding. Too often in this round, the dessert is the afterthought, and he's put a lot of thought into this up front. That, that's a skillful thing to do, white chocolate, caramelised mousse, and garnish it and make it look that good. I knew it'd come good. You've got four minutes left, Joe. Yes, Chef. Joe's main, seared duck breast, goat's cheese pearl barley, salsa fee, cauliflower puree, pak choy, blackberry jus. Sounds like two different main courses trying to get out from, uh, from underneath each other. I can't see how they're all going to go together. It's a long day in the office, isn't it? I mean, it really is. Is everything ready to go, Joe? Yes. Joe, you have two minutes left. Oh, you've lost a plate, plate up neat one. Why are you done. shaking? I don't know. Come on, keep it Come together. on, why am I shaking? Come on, Joe. Joe, your time is now up. Yes, sure. Critics are waiting. That's everything ready to go now, Joe? I think that's me, Chef. OK. Good afternoon. OK, so for main course, you have seared duck breast with cauliflower puree 
uh, mascarpone and goat's cheese pearl barley, uh, pak choy, fondant salsify, a uh, herb crumb and blackberry jus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It looks like it's been um, put together for the eye rather than saying, come on and eat me. And I just don't know where this black, black currant jus fits in no, at no, all. Don't, don't put it don't on Don't do there. it, Hurry okay. Up. I'm not going to cripple this dish by pouring it on. High point, a little sort of creamy pearl barley sort of number. The duck is as tough as a duck could ever be. It's a puzzling plateful, really because I love that pearl barley and I really enjoyed that crumb. But the duck doesn't have any flavour and nor does the goat's cheese, really. They're both very, very mild. None of it is really speaking to each other. The risotto like pearl barley with the, the goat's cheese is, is, is lovely. However, my issue is the sauce. This is so sharp. I actually really like the sauce. It's big and it's bold and it's fruity. And I think that will always work with duck. You've got 15 minutes for your dessert. Yes, chef. Is that going to work? Yes. Salted chocolate ganache with a ginger biscuit base, mango creme, fresh comfy orange peel and orange reduction. At the moment, I'm looking at it thinking, there's so much going on there. But if it said salted chocolate ganache with ginger and orange, that actually sounds rather enticing. Joe, you've got a couple of minutes left. Yeah. Are we on track? We are, chef. Stop shaking. Not quite. No, you haven't. Not quite. I'm getting better. Okay, Joe, your time is up now. The cruise is waiting. Yes, Chef. I'll just pick some more of these lovely wood sorrel leaves and shake like a madman. Joe, the critics are waiting. Okay, we've really got to go, Joe. Yeah, I'm good. Good? Yeah. Off you go. So for dessert, you have a salted chocolate ganache sat on a ginger nut biscuit base uh, with fresh mango, wood sorrel, uh, lemon thyme, comfy orange peel, uh, orange reduction and creme fraiche. Thank you. Thanks. Well, you have to take your hat off to the chef because he has arranged 28 small bliffs of something white in a circle. Have you actually counted them? I counted them. <laughs> How many did you get? 27. 27, you see. You've been cheated. It's a huge, whacking, thick lump of indiscriminate chocolate. It's the classic chocolate orange flavour. The chocolate ganache is incredibly rich, as expected, and is exactly what we're looking for. What lets this down a little bit for me, you can hardly taste it, the ginger biscuit crunch, because it's smothered by that chunk of, of, of ganache. That was brutal. I mean, it's very nerve-wracking and it's hard not to shake when you're plating up, which makes a difference. That's a completely new experience and a very daunting one at that. Dean's lamb rump, peas, morels and mint jelly. It's not going to be as simple as it sounds, but it's going to be hard to mess up with that combination. Dean, you've got three and a half minutes left. Are we going to be all right? Are no, it's we on gonna time? Be, it's going to be very close. Very close. I very like very close. close. Dean, you're almost there. You're a little bit over. Keep sure. it going. Keep it going. Keep control. Dean, you're now five minutes over. What is left to go? It's just a piece of sauce. I'll just do the sauce, chef. OK. All right, ready to go. Good chef. I apologise for the lateness. I do apologise, and I'm sorry for the delay. Thanks, Dean. Thank you. Um, today I've cooked for you a lamb rump with peas, mint, finished with morale mushrooms and Israeli couscous. 
burnt onions and a mint jelly and the sauce is on the side. Hope you enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. I admire the instinct to simplicity because this is peas, mint, morels, lamb. And the mint jelly is terrific, but it doesn't have the lusciousness that it could have had if it had been a little better seasoned. Just that last moment which would have made it an absolute humdinger. Lamb's quite nice, but if ever there was a crying need of a roast potato, this is it. I think he's done well in coaxing big flavours out of the pea puree, the mint jelly. I think the lamb tastes good. I just miss kind of crunch and texture. I think there's promise, but it's not a slam dunk. This is a really nice plate of food. It's just not got the, the finish factor that I was hoping for that Dean was going to deliver. It's still a good dish. There's some issues here with, with this plate, but in saying that, I would eat it all. It didn't seem too angry, so hopefully it's not too bad. 15 minutes for your dessert. So you're going to be on time, do you think? Uh, it's going to be close, but hopefully. Dean's dessert. Cheesecake, burnt butter, macerated raspberries and yuzu gel. The sweet things, there's not sweet things. It's a very complicated thing. Well, you have to just wait and see what Dean can do with all this. God bless all who sail in her. The critics are ready when you are. Are you a lot happy with this dessert, Dean? I am a lot more happy with this dessert. So it's just the crest on and then we're done? Uh, yes, Chef. Off you go. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. I've given to you a white chocolate cheesecake, burnt butter crumb, a roasted white chocolate, raspberries and a um, yuzu gel with a bit of pressed lemon. Thank, Thank you. you. It looks great. It's not a cheesecake. It's uh, a deconstructed cheesecake. Mm. It looks very nice, and the elements are quite distinguished. But hang on. Shouldn't we just have a nice raspberry cheesecake? It's not unpleasant, and there's a lot of thought into the various textures and flavours, but it's will-o'-the-wisp. It's, it's barely there. Yes, that yuzu gel absolutely um, shimmers with flavour, doesn't it? But the rest of the plate, it feels like it really needs that. There's definitely something good there. That looks fantastic, absolutely beautiful. I think this dish is very, very, very good. That beautiful, creamy, light white chocolate cheesecake is absolutely divine. That was probably the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. It was, it's horrible. Just time cut away, just caught up to me. I think I've met, I don't know, just. I very much like the sound of Joey's main course. If she made a brilliant salad, a great crab cake, and a very nice pea and mint soup and found a way to bring them all together on the plate, I would be very, very happy. I'd ask her to be my friend. Oh, my God, stop. I forgot to check that the fryer was on, which was such a rookie error. Um, the fryer is now on, so my crab cakes will be imminent. Simple. Simple, hopefully delicious. Mm. What's that to go on? That's it. Olive oil? Yeah. Hey, Joe, your time is up. Yeah, done. Happy? Yeah. Today I've made a white crab and green apple salad, a brown crab and red chilli cake, and a chilled pea and mint soup. Thank you. Thank you very much. It takes a lot at the very end of a, of a day's judging to deliver a course that I really, really want to eat. It Absolutely. looks really pretty. It looks it? really, really pretty.
what Joey's delivered here is an absolute humdinger of a bistro dish. Mmm. And it's just perfect. It is a straight sets victory. I think the soup is worthy of having on, on its own somewhere. It's brilliant. But those, those little croquettes, the crab croquettes, are amazing, aren't mm. they? Everything is wonderfully well done. Do you do doggy bags? The potato and crab cakes are so delicious, you know, they, they'd have a bowl of them. The crab is beautiful, it's fresh, the apple brings a freshness to it, there's a little warmth, good seasoning, and the beignets are delicious. How are you? Good. Yeah? I sort of have forgotten all about pudding. <laughs> you thought you were finished? Yeah. <laughs> no, Joey, you've still got dessert to go. I know, I know. You've got another 15 minutes. That's, that's good. Joey's dessert does raise the spectre of the panna cotta. Yoghurt and coconut panna cotta, rum poached cherries, crumbled sablo biscuit and lime granita. I would have hoped for more uh, at this stage of this competition. Um, if she's going to make one, it better be really, really good. <laughs> Three minutes left, Joey. Yeah. Are we all right? Good time? I think so, just. Sorry, it's going everywhere. You're gonna have to be quick now. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, for pudding, I've made a yoghurt and coconut panna cotta with crumbled sable, um, lime granita and rum and vanilla poached cherries. Hope you like it. Thank you. Thanks. It's funny, someone can just put a few things on a plate, almost without any particular artifice, and they just look right, don't they? This is good cooking, thoughtfully done, not overdressed. This dish is as near to faultless as anything ever gets. I've finished, finished mine, so I need some of yours. <laughs> I hope that this is not a flash in the pan, that this is how Joey cooks. Put plain flavours together, show them off to their best, because it's marvellous. Joey's a star. I love the crumble that she's made. Together with the coconut and the lime, I think it's, it's, it's a lovely match. It has a great flavour and this texture is nice and smooth and velvety, but I'm just looking for a little bit more of the big surprise, the big wow. Flipping heck. It was really tough. I mean, enjoyable, but 75 minutes is absolutely nothing even if I was cooking it for my family. Um, I think I would have been running around bright red, probably swearing. So uh, it was really tough, um, but yeah. Wow, our chefs here really stepped up to the mark. One of the things you and I always look for on this day is have we put through the right chefs from the last round? And today we have got that right. Gavin found cooking for our critics very difficult today, but I thought he performed very well. His John Dory dish, the white chocolate caramel mousse, was absolutely delicious. If I went home today, I'd be disappointed, of course I would, but I'm competing against some very good chefs. It's difficult, very difficult. Joe, without a doubt, is a good chef. The plate for me worked. It was just that sauce mm. overrode everything else. Joe's ganache dish would have been a knockout dessert. It just didn't quite get there today. But it's still a good cook, and that's the dilemma we have with Joe. Yeah. I want a place in the next round. I want to be there and cook for the judges again. I've got more to show, I've got more to prove, and uh, I want to keep going as far as I can. Dean pulled himself together today, which was great. I liked the little jelly on the side. I thought that worked very well. The dish did lack seasoning for me. It lacked depth of flavour. Dean's cheesecake looked stunning. 
I thought he really upped his game on the, on the presentation of this dessert. It tasted great and it looked great. If I went home today, I'd be devastated. I'd, I'd be distraught. I don't think I'd... I'd feel very annoyed with myself because I know I've got a lot more to give. I know I can do it. I just hope I get the chance. I thought Joey played incredibly safe today. Joey's crab dish didn't hit me like it did with her dessert in the last round that had the complete wow factor of perfection. Joey made us the coconut and yoghurt panna cotta, which I mm. actually loved. Mm. Everything about this dish is sort of right. I have no idea if I've done enough. All I can say, I, I've done my best. I would love to take all four of these chefs through. But we need to take through the chefs that we know can cope in the next round, will be able to focus. It's knockout week. That's a lot of pressure. I think I know who could cope with what's coming around the corner. We know what we've got to do here. Hey, chefs. You had to make an effort today, and you did more than that, above and beyond. Splitting one of you out of the pack has not been easy at all. But we can only take three of you through. The chef leaving the competition is... Joe. Chefs. Well done, Joe. Good luck, everyone. Very close. Thank you. It's disappointing, you know, but there, there was some bloody good chefs in there. I'm still a young chef. I've still got a lot to learn, and uh, I'm going to use those comments to move on and upwards. Congratulations, chefs. All three of you deserve to be here. Well done. <laughs> oh, I feel, feel gobsmacked. I feel relieved still to be here. Uh, well, it's probably the greatest achievement so far of, of my career and obviously I don't want to stop there. I just want to keep pushing on. The last few hours, pretty nerve-wracking. Hard work, probably the hardest I've had to deal with. I mean, to come through, yeah, pretty stoked, pretty happy with that, so. An excellent day. It's been wonderful. It's exhausting but and, and intense, but so much fun. I'm so excited by it and I want to stick around. Next time, another six professionals fight for a place in the quarter final. I think I might be falling in love with you. Simply outstanding.